I'm talking with Josh Snodgrass today, and we have so much in common because we're both guitar players, we're both musicians, and we play music uh, for the glory of God and Christian music especially. So Josh, thanks for being willing to come on here and have a conversation just as musicians about getting your music out there, especially through YouTube, because that's something that has taken off for you recently. And I know... Uh, with your story and your testimony uh, that God has brought you through a lot and you're using your gifts to spread music throughout the world. And isn't that an amazing thing uh, to be a part of and just see what God is doing. So uh, Josh, tell us a little bit about your story and what God's done for you, how you got started with music. And then we'll go on to uh, talking more about what's happening with your YouTube channel and how you're promoting your music now. That sounds great. I, well, my dad taught me to play the guitar when I was, five years old because he was the pastor of the little church and he decided that he needed a worship team. And so me and my brother, my brother got the bass, I got the guitar. And so we just kind of grew up, I mean, it was a little tiny country church and we, you know, grew up playing in church and we weren't great or anything. You know, we just kind of played together as a family some, um, you know, didn't practice very much. And then when I got to be um, like kind of an early teenager, I really just fell in love with music and with the guitar. And uh, and there's a lot going on in my life where, you know, kind of this, the farther I went along, the farther I got from the Lord. And so I just got to this point where I went, had this like dream of being a rock star, you know, and um, started just kind of chasing after that kind of music and learning to play, you know, I mean, learning to play better and better as I went. Uh, but, uh, but it was all kind of focused on doing it for my own glory, I guess. And, and you know, I was battling depression and different things and really ended up, in a very bad place at the time I was like 16, 17, 18. And, uh, you know, I ended up, you know, on drugs and was an alcoholic and, you know, I was homeless for a while. I mean, it was, it was crazy. My life got just so out of hand. And, uh, you know, it was one of those guys that, you know, basically I was always just sure my big break was right around the corner, but it, you know, <laughs> I was just a loser really. So um, fortunately, when, when I was just almost 22 years old, I realized like how, crazy my life was. And well, I mean, I'd, I'd known it was bad, but I couldn't do this. Like I couldn't free myself from the things I was enslaved to in terms of addiction and stuff. And so when I, um, you know, when I was that age, I had this time when I just kind of broke down and surrendered to the Lord. And yeah, it's really a lot like the prodigal son, you know, where I realized that my life was a disaster and I'd be better off with God and, you know, I'm no good on my own. And so I just asked Jesus to be my Lord, my savior. And, um, you know, he did just a really like, amazing work in lifting me out of that life. And it took time, you know, it was one of those things, I had some relapses for the first eight months or so where I'd go back to, you know, uh, using drugs again or whatever, but um, but God did free me. Uh, and I said, I've been clean now for a long time. Yeah, it's like 24 years, I guess. And, uh, and I just praise God for that. You know, it's just the power of the gospel to transform a life and take it from this total destruction to, you know, freedom and hope in Jesus Christ. And that is what I, you know, just live in, live in hope now. So I'm so excited about that. But then it's funny because when I became a Christian, I really kind of gave up the guitar at first because it'd been so much a part of that old life. And, um, you know, but I also, I felt like I really, you know, like God was calling me to evangelism. You know, I just wanted to reach people who were, had struggles like me and reach them and just share the hope that I had. And so I just started praying that God would give me that gift of evangelism to share with people. And um, a few years later, I felt God calling me to join the worship team at our church. And it was kind of funny because even though all, all that time when I'd been doing like secular rock and roll stuff, I mean, I didn't really know much about music. I was making a lot of noise and, you know, I was kind of using power chords or whatever, but I didn't really know what made chords work or understand scales that much. And so when I went to like go and play in the worship team, which is very musical and, uh, you know, there's a lot of stuff. I just felt like I, I didn't know what to do. I didn't know how to play like that. And um, so like, I just felt like I wasn't a good enough guitar player to play on our worship team at our little church that my wife and I went to at that time. And um, and so then, um, you know, in, I just kind of, they, they were patient with me and I gradually learned. And, but, you know, I, I think I had that gift though that God had given me for music. And like, it got to the point where I felt like I wanted to use it for evangelism. And um, and that's when I kind of felt that call in 2013 to go out on the road and start doing concerts at churches where I shared my testimony of how Jesus saved me. But then also, you know, I do guitar concerts kind of as a as a draw to get people to come to the concerts and then I'd share my story with them. Sure. Um, that's a so great that's idea. I mean, 
you're using your music in such an amazing way because there's something deeper. The meaning behind it is to share your story and also share the gospel. And so, yes, the music is great. And I'm sure you've gotten better and better just from doing it so much. And I think a lot of musicians get discouraged early on because it doesn't sound as great as they think it should or they give up too early and really it's doing it over and over and the years of practice really do build up and uh, you get better and better at it. But I think that meaning and that purpose behind it can help you get through those discouraging times where you realize it's more than just the music. There's, there's meaning because it can literally encourage someone when they're having a hard day, it can change their life and meet them right at a moment where maybe they're questioning their faith in God. And what an amazing opportunity to open those doors where music can reach people in such a special way that just words don't seem to do that, but it is a great opportunity and an open door to share the gospel. So you've been able to do that for years now, traveling around to different churches and uh, just sharing your gift. But that's probably made you a much better guitarist just doing that hundreds and hundreds of times. Yeah, when I first um, was kind of feeling the call, I say it was maybe about 2006 or so when I was first like feeling like this is something I wanted to do and feeling the call to pursue it. And I, w- um, I was talking with a guy named David Delgado, who at that time, he ran yes, a website. Yes, he's a friend of mine Food. as well. Really? What oh, a small he's world. <laughs> yeah, what a small world. <laughs> a great world. songwriter. Yeah, yeah. So we messaged, I mean, to this day, we, we message, you know, I mean, every, I don't know, once a month or so, we share songs with each other and awesome stuff um but anyways I was talking with him and he you know I told him kind of my vision what I wanted to do and he's like listen Josh the bar is a lot higher than you think it is and I'm like oh. <laughs> you know, for <laughs> <Thanks musicianship>, a <laughs> and, and I was like that's that's hard you know it's hard to hear as a new musician how I mean not that I was a new musician but as someone who was on this journey and he's just sharing that feedback like you're gonna have to get a lot better Josh <laughs> and you know um and so I took that and you know, just kind of those words of wisdom and realize like, I got to practice. And I did practice a lot. And I've practiced so much, you know, played the guitar, you know, thousands and thousands and thousands of hours. And and still every day, you know, I'm pr- I play probably two hours every day now. And I'm, you know, trying to record all the time. And so the crazy thing with music is that it's so discouraging. Because like, it feels like, for a long time, it feels like nobody cares. You know, like right. for a very long music. time, longer than you would for think. Long time. Years, way longer than you would think. And then Decades it's like, sometimes. yeah, at some point it kind of clicks and people start. And of course, you know, along the way, there's kind of an increase, I increase, I think, where you know, at first it's like your friend, your mom loves your music, and no one else does. Right? Of course, because they love you, and right? then, or whoever loves you, and they're supportive of you, and they're blessed by it because you did it. But yeah. trying to get complete strangers to care about your music um, is really hard, and I think that. But it's not just about musical talent either. I always tell people if this ministry was about the guitar, I would have quit after three months because it would have not been worth it. Yeah. And so I think you're right. Having that purpose combined with the gifting, combined with the pursuit. And my gifting came in a very raw form. You don't have to be some prodigy <laughs> to be used by God, I think. But you do have to have a willing heart and be persistent. And the point has come. It's been so crazy with me because... There's been like quite a few people. I've done about a thousand concerts now. There's been quite a few people who prayed to receive Christ at those concerts. And I get, you know, messages every day pretty much on YouTube and stuff from people just talking about how, you know, God used my music in one way or another to like maybe comfort them while they're in the hospital. Uh, you know, I, I get those kind of comments all the time that someone either died or thought they were dying and they've, you know, just was comfort to them, whether in that miserable place or or how they helps them get through their work day or, you know, whatever. And I'm like, well, you know, praise the Lord for that. It reminds them of God's presence as they're going through our time. And so I think that if you push through and continue to improve and just not just improve, like technically speaking, but improve in your ability to connect your music with the spirit of God, because um, that's something that's learned as well. Uh, and I think as you do that, that, that it, it just has this like supernatural impact that's hard to measure. I agree. And I'm so glad that you brought that up because it is so important uh, to have that basis and that foundation and not expect to just uh, be a wild success from the very beginning, because that is not most people's story. And uh, but how encouraging to see messages all the time from people that are blessed by the music, that it's making a difference in their life and in their day um, and in their salvation, too, for people coming to Christ because of hearing your music from all different walks of life from all over the world. Uh, It's amazing how we can be connected through the internet 
now and like, you could be home with your family or you could be traveling and just doing your everyday thing but people are hearing your music every single day through YouTube totally. so when was it would you say that your YouTube channel really took off with the hymn videos like what was it that actually clicked and started building that momentum yeah um so I started my YouTube channel in 2008 and I put on some videos that my wife and I had done she used to sing with me and I would play guitar and and uh, you know we didn't get much traction, and so from 2008 onward till 2019, I would use it to you know I'd release I tried all kinds of different things, doing different songs and stuff, and uh, videos that showed me playing, ones with her singing. We'd do just the audio, do lyric videos, all kinds of stuff. I mainly used it as a tool for booking though, because I'd make a video of myself playing something or her singing something, and then we'd send that to churches, and you know say hey can we come sing and play at your church, and so. Most of what we did during that time was going to lots of churches, you know, small churches in rural places no one else would go to and, or whatever. We go to inner city, city churches, we go to recovery ministries. And I just want to encourage people like, don't underestimate the value in the small ministry because most of what we've done has been small ministry. This YouTube thing is like, is like kind of the departure from everything that we've done. <laughs> you know, it's uh, everything we've done has been, you know, pretty much very small and like God does big things in those small places. and. But the YouTube thing, when it really took off, was in 2019. I had a friend in California. Actually, it's been funny. He was he had been a pastor, and then he um, ended up managing an RV park where we would stay when we traveled toured through that area. And him and me got to be friends, and he was such a blessing to us. But he asked me, he's like, Josh, have you ever thought about doing these long videos where you have like you know the hours of your music? And I was like, what are you talking about? You know, I've never seen anything like it. And he showed me a video from a piano player that he liked to listen to. Um, Dappy T Keys. I don't know if you ever seen his videos. He's got like a million subscribers. He's huge on YouTube, um, but uh, and he does very good, does very well. But he showed me his videos and suggested I do something like that, but with the guitar. And I was like, I don't know if anyone would listen to this. This is weird. And so I made a few few videos that I think the first one was like a half an hour long and had like maybe some scenery that I just took with myself with my phone, and it like views kind of started to trickle in. And I tried some different things. So I saw some of the other channels doing that kind of stuff were using stock photos and then hours of you know music. And so I decided that um, that year, um, in the end of uh, 2019, I was going to re record a, a Christmas album. And I was going to put it on there. And, and I did like in November. And then it blew up and got like a half million views in like two weeks. I was like, wow, OK, that's crazy. And so that moment like kind of changed our lives because um, you know, before that, we'd never really seen the light of day on YouTube or anywhere. It's just, you know, living off little church, you know, concerts. And the problem with that, though, is if you're not traveling, if your calendar isn't full of all these little churches and you're not getting, you're not earning a living. So it was a hard way because I was just stuck on the road all the time. But, um, yeah, that that video blew up. And then right after that, uh, at the beginning of the next year, I just did a video. It's still up. I, um, it's like an hour of hymns I recorded. That's not very good in hindsight, but it's the best I had at that time. And uh, it's it, it took off and got millions of views. And so since then, I just started going crazy. I'm like, okay, I got to record lots of music. And to this day, that's what I'm doing. So wow. So are you recording uh, like home studio on your own? You're recording yourself? Yes. Yeah, I do. I um I went to school for audio production um, wow. way back in like 2000, 2001, right about the time I was, became a Christian. Uh, that's the time I, I did that. And then I got into Bible college for a little while too. But um, but yeah, and not that that's necessary though, but it is helpful. But yeah, I use Pro Tools oh. and use a couple of microphones, and I just, you know, I just record right in this room I'm in right now. Yeah, I think it's great if you can record at home. You know, have a quiet space and a good microphone, and at least know how to record a little bit. And uh, also, I think it's just brilliant to have the longer videos of 30 minutes, an hour, several hours of whether it's acoustic music, instrumental music. I've also seen things work really well if it's a theme like Christmas music because people yeah. are searching for that and so yeah. many times if we're trying to be creative as musicians and we're trying to put something out there that no one's looking for then no one's finding it but if someone just types in Christmas instrumental guitar they're going to find your music and if they mm -hmm. type in you know whatever your top keywords are that people are uh, searching for Christian guitar music or Christian instrumentals worship music then they're going to find your videos so I think that's so smart and it's something that a lot of musicians might try hard to be original and do something different, but really it's helpful to find what people are looking for and then serve that audience and give them more of that kind of thing so they can expect it from your channel. And uh, 
trying to do that as a Christian musician, uh, you have such an opportunity to reach people in lots of different ways. So I try to encourage musicians uh, to look for those patterns of things that are working and do more of that. And you've done that and it's working really well on your channel. And it seems like uh, a really good thing that will keep going for you. I'm sure people find your videos and find your music and then they can get your CDs or they can book you for a concert and contact you. And so it, it does help to continue your ministry and your bookings. And uh, so it's a great way to, for people to discover you from all over the world. So I think it's a great strategy for musicians that are wanting to get their music out there. So how would you encourage musicians if they're wanting to start getting their music out on YouTube? What's a kind of what's your system at this point? Yeah, that's a great question. Well, I think that you said something there about kind of like, if you have some success, like try to replicate that. Um, don't, you know, if like, let's say you release a video of you singing a song and, and uh, that video does pretty well for your channel, like maybe it gets, 500 views instead of 100 views or something or whatever, you know, it's a thousand instead of 200 or whatever. You just see like, oh, okay, that, that one did better than all the other ones. Like try to look at that video and see what was it that you did. You know, I mean, long videos like I'm doing now, they're not the hack that they used to be. I think maybe about 2018, 2017, if you did a long video, it was just going to blow up with YouTube's algorithm. It's not like that now in that YouTube is hyper competitive in that niche now. So it's not, um, so it'd be hard to, hard to compete there is what I'm trying to say, but whatever, and, and YouTube is hyper competitive. That's the thing. It's like, so even for me, I mean, people look at my channel, they think, oh, you've got this huge channel and you know, you dominate your niche or whatever. And like, you know what? I fight for my YouTube channel all the time. It is hard to get each video to perform well. It's hard to keep the traffic coming in and you have to learn to, um, you know, what I, one thing, I'm, if you want to learn to be a good YouTuber, there are a ton of channels like search on YouTube, how to be a good YouTuber, um, how to promote your music on YouTube. There's so many channels promoting, I mean, they do videos that teach you like how to speak the language of YouTube, like click through rate and, you know, thumbnail images and all these kind of things. And things like thumbnail and title and niche, you know, there's, um, there's a guy, Nate Black. I love to watch his, his videos. Um, where he, you know, really talks, got a lot of great ideas about how to fit into the algorithm and how to make it work. But there's a lot of channels like that. Um, so yeah, I mean, it, you, it's definitely not the like environment right now where you're just going to record a, you know, a video on your phone in your bedroom and have that blow up. Um, it's got to be, you know, it's got to be great audio and, and and good video, good lighting, and all that kind of stuff. But it, or you can do, like you said, lyric videos. Um, I've had some some success with a few instrumental lyric videos actually that I've done um I remember a couple of years ago i did how great thou art and put the lyrics on it and i think i don't know it might have like hundred thousand views or something I haven't seen the success like you're talking about with individual songs that's so awesome but um and maybe sometimes with like lesser known songs uh you might have success you know if you're doing a song like how great there are probably there's hundreds of thousands of people that record that song but if you do some song that like either a song that's like really new from a big artist that a lot of people aren't searching yet or a song that's like maybe kind of a more of a niche hymn that mo there's not that many other people that recorded that hymn or something that can be successful too. Yes, I think what made a difference in my videos on my channel that have taken off is my first video to hit a million views was I have decided to follow Jesus, but it was a lyric video and I saw someone else using my audio. They made a, mu a lyric video for it. Uh, that wasn't great quality. Like the, the image was not that crisp and the, you know, the text could be better. So I thought, what if I do a good quality lyric video of that and it suggests to mine and then that started doing well. And then uh, my top video right now is what a friend we have in Jesus. And it's a lyric awesome. video with stock video that I edited myself on Video Leap, which is an app. I think it costs like $5 or something for the app and you can edit your own awesome. video. So I think being scrappy as a musician, especially as an independent um, totally. making your own videos and using stock videos, keeping it simple is really yeah. good. But the difference is it wasn't just a cover video. It wasn't just a guitar video. It was with lyrics. And that's what made it stand out in search results and then suggested videos. And then when I saw those taking off, I did a whole hymn album and several of those songs are doing well. And now I'm looking to do something similar uh, as yours and putting maybe the whole album on a video to be half an hour of hymns and then have lyrics throughout that. Uh, so I think being creative, but also just looking at the data and looking at the analytics of what's working can really help you 
to not just throw spaghetti at the wall and guess and just wonder if it's going to do well, but actually uh, giving it your best shot by seeing what's working and even looking at other channels, like your channel is similar. So I thought, let's have a conversation because your audience would possibly like my music and my audience would like your music. It's very similar and hopefully yeah. uh, people will find it because of that. So uh, before we go, I would love for you to share how people can connect with your music and find your website and how they can support you in your music. Oh, that, well, thanks. Yeah, so my website is just my name. It's joshsnodgrass.com. And, uh, you know, I'm on, you know, Spotify and YouTube and all that. You can just probably search Worship Guitar on YouTube and you find me on, on Spotify. You can search my name. I don't have as much traction on Spotify. Um, but, uh, you know, there's a lot of stuff at my website. I have some teaching resources for guitar players. You know, if you're trying to learn to play fingerstyle guitar, I've got stuff there and I've got, you know, um, MP3s and uh, CDs and stuff. And also, you know, I, this is crazy. I forgot to mention this. I just did a song with Phil Keggy actually, that oh, I'm really awesome. excited about. Love that, Phil. Um, gonna That's release. amazing. And two incredible guitarists. I can't wait to hear that. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna be releasing that soon. So um, hopefully another few weeks or so, but um, yeah, lots of, <laughs> stuff all the time you because know, uh, like, I like what you said about how you're you know releasing an album of you know hymns and trying you know and that's it's been you know for me I've recorded hundreds of songs now and and YouTube can be a grind I wanted to say about how uh, you know because if you're trying to like do a lot of the same thing it can kind of stifle your creativity and and be a pain but you know that I, music is work so it's not all just fun and creativity so um, I just want to encourage people to if you get something that works, push through and hopefully it'll bless somebody. Well, thank you so much for sharing your story and some behind the scenes about your music, because when someone is doing something successful, it's so interesting and it's fascinating to hear the story that led up to it. And a lot of times it does take years of work and years of practice and uh, lots of trial and error before something takes off. But uh, I'm so happy to see the success for your music and to see the Christian music that you're putting out that's good quality and it's encouraging people. So keep up the great work and thank you for sharing you your too. story here today. Yeah, thanks you too yes i was i hadn't seen your channel before when you emailed me and i was i was blessed by it. i really enjoyed your music we have a lot in common so i thought we need to know each other so thanks for awesome. being here no problem